So welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to taxes that apply to my business. I'm very happy that everybody's here on a Friday morning. We're gonna be definitely talking about taxes. That's a perfect way to end the week with more education. My name is Juan Salas. Uh, we are the UNR Extension. We are the Small Business Education Program. You're gonna see this SBEP popping up more across the valley. We're gonna be providing more education, more videos. We're coming up with great, great material for education purposes. Good morning, Reina. Good morning, Juan. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Like Juan said, it's a very warm morning, <laughs> but still grab your coffee because you're gonna have fun with these taxes, right, Juan? Definitely. <laughs> so here's our Facebook page and uh, the agenda for today, um, we're going to be presenting, me and Reina, Mike uh, probably will join us later, but uh, for we have divided this in four different chapters, basically one, understanding taxes, income, expenses, and taxable amounts. We're going to be talking about tax and business structures. We're going to do an overview about independent contractor and employee taxes and also go over some Nevada taxes. Um, of course, some questions and answers at the end. So stick around. Um, we're going to go over every section. In every section, we're going to do a pause and we're going to take any questions that you might have and uh, provide any examples that uh, you, might, you might have interest so first, let me begin with the Department of Business and Industry. This is a fantastic website, fantastic resources that you have available. Um, go to the business.mv.gov, right down to the Business Resource Center. And there you're going to have and find the Nevada ecosystem chart and the guide to starting a business in Nevada. These are PDF files and that serve you as a guide and also source of information for all these subjects that we have related to the business, okay? So check it out and download those links. Taxes that apply to my business. Section one, understanding taxes, income, expenses, and taxable amount. This is gonna be a very fun section we where we want to um, talk more about the perspective of taxes okay so let's begin most business owners do not like taxes the subject of taxes some might say that might be boring confusing and usually is delegated to somebody else okay so even though this meeting is being recorded you can be honest with it you know, um, I've been doing taxes for about 16 years and I see many faces when they come, <laughs> many different faces when they come to the office and talk about taxes and talk about what's going on related to the tax aspect of their business. So yes, there is that perspective and share, share in the chat, you know, what's going on uh, with your own perspective. <laughs> It's probably the least favorite subject in business. You know, many of you did not start your business with taking care of taxes, you know. So I open up a marketing uh, web design, okay, company. So doing taxes was not my priority, you know, talking to customers, being out there, networking, things like that. Taxes was not the first intent to open your own business. And yes, I understand, okay? Um, and we're gonna touch a little bit on uh, pre-tax planning because uh, that's a very interesting uh, uh, point of view, Richard. Tax planning, there's no, there's no possibility to do tax planning if you don't understand your own tax situation first, okay? So uh, this is a perfect class for the foundation to do uh, tax planning. But even though it is the least favorite subject, it is as important as any. 
um, for example, Reina. Reina touches, uh, she takes care of the marketing classes. You know, how to be creative, how to design perfect and nice looking websites and flyers and things like that. Yes, uh, sometimes it is more fun to be creative than talking about taxes, but it's as important as any. All the companies out there have their own tax department, have tax people dedicated to taking care of that subject. So um, we have to change our perspective. You know, it is based on rules and formulas. Therefore, taxes are predictable. Planning is possible. Okay. So um, I think that maybe taxes are easier to plan than marketing. Sometimes the marketing, you just do a flyer and don't know what's going to happen. You know, you make a post in Facebook and hopefully you're going to get some clients. Yes, there is a strategy behind that. But uh, on taxes, we have to change our perspective. It is based on rules and formulas. Therefore, it is much more uh, predictable, okay, with the right information on hand. So what's the basic, basic, basic definition of tax? Taxable amount and tax rate. That's the basic definition. Every single tax works that way. Taxable amount and tax rate, okay? So in order to change our perspective, let's keep that formula in mind. Tax, taxable amount, and tax rate. So let's simplify, okay? By simplification, sometimes we can change our perspective and see things from another angle. Most of the taxes are applied to the net income. So that net income becomes the taxable amount. That's why we put it in parentheses right here. So net income, what is net income? It's basically income minus expenses, okay? Tax rate, each tax, each type of tax has its own rate. Okay, so there's no like a general rate. Every single tax will have its own rate. We are very familiar with the, uh, with the sales tax rate, right? Every time we go to the supermarket, every time we go somewhere else, if we buy something for a hundred bucks, don't expect to pay 100 bucks at the cashier. You're gonna pay more, which is a taxable amount of a hundred times the sales tax, okay? so. It might sound very simplistic right now, but that's the way we have to think about it so we can change our perspective on the tax subjects. So let's begin with the net income calculation. Okay, what is considered income? Income is referred as anything that is in connection between the money and your business, okay? So the income is your business income. If you are doing a business, anything that related to that particular activity, it is considered taxable income for your business. So you must report on your tax return all income you receive from your business, unless it is excluded by law, okay? So do not think or follow the advice of uh, your friend or something that you heard on the news, you have to go to the source, which is the law. If the income is excluded by law, yes, it's not considered taxable income. So if, um, if you get cash, if you get checks, if you get uh, property in exchange for services or just services in exchange for services, that is also income, okay? Um, I have some examples. I got cash, but um, I got the cash from the customer. It didn't make it to the bank. <laughs> I, I spent it because I, I saw a great deal about some tools or, or a machine that I needed for work. So it never made it to the bank. So that cash, even though it didn't make it to the bank, it is considered income. Okay. So you have to include it in your in your uh, business, in your business as income. What is not considered income? This is very important as well. And particularly this year, this past year, 
2020. Owner contributions, loans, returns, or personal deposits, those are not income. And I have seen this where um, clients will just look at their banks, bank uh, statement and look at the all deposits amount and will consider that as the total income of the month. But that can be a terrible mistake because sometimes the owner has to put money back. You got a loan, uh, maybe you got a return or something. So you have to classify all the money that goes in properly. There might be a loan, there might be a personal deposit. So don't try to um, avoid <laughs> the, the categorization, the bookkeeping side of income as well um, to make sure you are only considering income and you are paying income on on um, you're paying taxes on that particular income. This particular year in 2020, many businesses got the uh, PPP funds, okay? Those PPP funds are not taxable. They become a loan, then they are forgiven, but uh, they are not considered taxable income. And this is based on the law, excluded by law, okay? EIDL grants advance, not taxable as well. Small businesses, they got the EIL advance based on their employees that they have, that is not taxable. The other section of EIDLs, which is a loan, we have already talked about that, that loans are not considered income, okay? Unemployment, I seen some people think that because they got unemployment based on their uh, gig business or their um, sole proprietor business considered as business income, which is not. Unemployment is taxable at the personal level. It is not related to, to your business. You receive unemployment based on your business probably, but it's not a taxable income in your business. Like I mentioned at the beginning, if you want to share your industry, your thoughts, please use the chat and we will be happy to build on that. What is deductible in my business? Ordinary and necessary expenses. Okay. Why are we talking about expenses? Because we have to simplify the formula for taxes. We have to come up with our net income and arrive to our taxable amount to get to our tax later on, okay? Expenses must be uh, both ordinary and necessary. An ordinary expense is one that is, mo that is common and accepted in your trade of business. So it is industry-based. A necessary expense is one that is helpful and appropriate. This is the section that imagination runs wild, okay? Mo many things might become ordinary and necessary in this particular section, but there are rules, okay? Uh, most of the most common are cost of goods sold, basically materials and things that you buy in order to modify or sell and things like that. You got fixed and variable costs related to your business which might be fixed cost, you know, rent, cable, internet, variable costs, depends on your industry, maybe your energy bill, maybe um, your food supplies, um, maybe your paper, maybe a lot of things that are related to your particular industry. Indirect and business expenses. This has become in 2020 very, very important because the way we change the, the way in which we, we operate our business was affected. So maybe we were driving less, but we had more home office expenses. So indirect expenses have 
swift from one side to the other. So we have to make sure that whatever expenses are ordinary and necessary during the COVID-19 are included in our, in our expenses section. Tip, if you are sometimes in, in, in doubt, okay, where is this expense really an expense, a business expense? Think about if you would reimburse that expense, okay? Change, change hats, okay? What about if you are on the hands of the IRS where you have to decide if this is um, something that is deductible or not? Think about if you would reimburse the expense. If, if you have an employee that comes with a receipt for 150 bucks, okay. Hey, um, boss, I have uh, driven a lot this week and I need a reimbursement for $150 in gas. Would you just write the check for 150 or would you ask more questions about it? I hope you would ask more questions about it. You know, what were the clients? How many clients? Um, where do they live? Do, they, do you meet them at home, at a coffee shop, or were just, you know, Zoom meetings? So if you think and you change your perspective that way, if you are the one reimbursing the expense, you might think about, or you might rethink about the expenses. Hope that uh, hope that trick um, helps somebody. Um, okay, we have some private practices as therapists. Great. So share with us your industry, and this is going to be more more practical, more fun. Let's continue with what is deductible in my business. Some business expenses are not 100% deductible, okay? And this is very important because we're going to go a little bit about tax planning and is it, is it okay to have that expense? For 2020, the meals are were 50%, but for 2021, it's going to be 100%. Basically, the, IR, the the government is trying to promote more people eating out with customers, business meals, business related meals. If you are on your own, you know, it, it really doesn't count <laughs> as a business expense. And if you think about it, if you as a business owner would probably would not reimburse somebody that is just eating, an employee that's eating by itself, and not conducting businesses as well. Professional clothes, that's another item. Um, the professional clothes cannot be adequate for personal use. Basically, what it says is it should have a logo. It, it should have some functionality requirements for the job, for the business, okay? Protective uh, gear, uh, special boots, you know, special pants, uh, things like that, definitely. But think about this. How much are you actually saving? Is it worth it spending the money? And that comes back to our equation, okay? Because net income is going to be multiplied by a percentage. So for every expense that you make, after deciding that it's a deductible expense, of course, you're going to be just saving a percentage of that. So if the tax rate is 10%, you're going to be saving only 10% by, by paying or by accruing that expense. Okay. So if you make, um, buy a purchase for a hundred bucks, ream of paper in, in, on sale. Oh, I'm just going to buy it. I don't need it, but I'm just going to buy it because it's so cheap right now. Okay, go for it. But don't do it because it is a tax saving because it's going to be only 
of tax savings. Is it really worth it? Can you use the 100 bucks somewhere else? Okay, so those are things that will um, help you, I think, like taxes a little bit more <laughs> because it has more functionality, it has more value uh, to, to your business, okay? Expenses paid with PPP EI, EIDL advance are deductible. That was another um, myth out there or, or question during this tax season saying that, uh, okay, if I cannot, if I'm not, if I'm not gonna pay taxes on that amount, the PPP, probably the expenses are not deductible, but that is not true, okay? They are deductible for all 2020. And 2021 if you have more money. Okay, now let's talk about <clears throat> the rates, okay? Remember the equation, taxable amount times the tax rate. There are many, <laughs> there are many tax rates out there. You know, you got capital gains, you got uh, um, um, minimum tax rates for, <clears throat> for when you have more income, um, qualified expenses, there's a lot of tax rates. But I want you from this class, I want you to remember three main ones, okay? FICA taxes, which is the Social Security and Medicare, 15.3. It applies to net income, okay? The equation, keep that in mind. What is the taxable amount and what is the tax rate? FICA taxes apply to the net income, which is income minus expenses. The federal taxes. This is the federal taxes for personal income, okay? It is the progressive table from zero to 37 and applies to income after personal deductions. The third one, it is the corporate income, which is fixed at 21% and applies again to the net corporate income amount. So we're going to use these three tax rates and we're going to see where they apply, okay, on your business because your business can have different tax structures. So we're going to use these three and see where they apply and when they apply. So I have a poll. Let me double check here. Um, and let's see, um, Reina, can you see the poll? Yes. Okay, so let's see if um, you can help me with, with that. I have a question, you know, if, um, if the taxes were a surprise for you in 2020, okay? And um, we got some options. You know, yes, I didn't and I didn't know about this. No, I was kind of more prepared. And also uh, we'll find out on Monday, the 17th, which is the deadline. Okay. So um, I'm gonna take this moment to tell you that Monday it is the due date for taxes, corporate taxes and personal taxes as well. So, um, no, no personal taxes, actually. So um, make sure you make an extension at least if you're not prepared to do your taxes. That's gonna save you about 400 bucks in penalties. So this class probably gonna save you 400 bucks in penalties if you didn't know about that. They, they're saying that I thought that they extended the tax deadline to July? Uh, no, July was last year extension. This is Monday. This, May 17th. Yes, May 17th is Monday. Okay. Um, that's what I, yeah. So,
I don't think um, there was a new extension, but um, what I tell everybody, just make an extension and that's going to give you time until September. Um, another person, Fred, Fred is asking, and if you were an LLC of corporation, it is earlier. Um, yes, and depends on the type of entity that you have, which we're going to go over in a minute. Okay. And someone else is asking for, can you touch on a strategies of for pre-tax planning? Perfect, yeah. Okay. And uh, we're gonna close this polling. You're gonna talk about 1099s too, right? Yes, we're gonna okay. talk about 1099s. Okay. okay. I'm gonna end the just polling. Because, just because Gilbert is asking, is he's uh, stating that he, that he has a private practice and he's a 1099. Perfect. So we got some, we got kind of a split between yes, no. Um, there's some few that are going to find out on Monday. Okay. Da -da -da -da. It is out. So can you see my screen back? Everything good? Okay, section two, tax and business structures. In this section, we're gonna talk about um, business structures and how those three type of taxes, tax rates are gonna apply. The main question that we, that we from the tax side, the other side of the desk always ask is, who is getting the money? Okay, this is very important. I know you are the business owner. I know you control everything. I am getting the money, but there are layers about this, okay? Who is getting the money? Who is getting tax? And these four, there are more, but we're gonna concentrate in these four types, okay? Who is getting the money? Is it a sole proprietorship? Is a partnership, a corporation? Or, uh, or an S corporation, okay? For example, many of you are sole proprietorships, okay? And we have to be very careful about the, the vocabulary that we use. So we make sure everything is clear. And I'm gonna show you an example about that. So, now, we're gonna talk about what is a sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, and S-Corp. Sole proprietorships. This is the most, the easiest one to begin. Sometimes you don't even realize, but you have a sole proprietorship, okay? Basically, the IRS says that um, if you are not incorporated and you have an intent to make money, you are basically having or owing a sole proprietorship. If there's the intent, you are making activities towards making money, you have a sole proprietorship, okay? So you have a business as soon as, um, that is very simple to begin, um, very simple to maintain. The business can operate an, under a DBA here and it, you can get your own EIN number. Okay, so you don't need a corporation, you don't need a, an entity, an LLC to get an EIN number. Uh, you can get an EIN number as a sole proprietorship, okay? So, and this is convenient because you don't have to be sharing your social security number. There's no legal separation between you and your business. Basically, it is one and the same. But for tax purposes, we have to be very clear about vocabulary. Who's getting the money in this particular case? Is it the person? Is it the business owner? No. From a tax perspective, the sole proprietorship is getting the money. Okay. Then there are some rules about sole proprietorship. Of course, how the business owner is going to get that money from the sole proprietorship. But 
from the tax point of view, we say your sole proprietorship is getting the money. So we're going to apply sole proprietorship rules that affect your tax liability. We are not going to talk about individual tax rules because individuals conduct businesses under a sole proprietorship. Okay, so you see the distinction? Yes, I see that the business owner is one and the same, but there's a layer. The sole proprietorship is getting tax on that business income. So the business activity is gonna be reported on Schedule C of your personal tax return. That's why it has its own form, okay? It's because it's, it has a sole proprietorship. The FICA taxes that we talk about and the federal income taxes that we talk about, they will apply to the sole proprietorship. And just to review, FICA applies to, to what amount? What is the taxable amount for FICA? Net income, okay? So make sure that you have control about that net income because that's gonna be the factor that is gonna help you determine your FICA and your federal income taxes. Um, Juan, uh, yes. someone has a question. Um, if I, if they have an, they have income from my YouTube channel, which is all about my dog, um, our meals at restaurants, I eat with her alone, <laughs> in which gets some of tax deductible. I don't want people walking on the on the dark side. <laughs> I would just say probably no meals okay. with you know probably you know the bed um, the the veterinarian bills you know um, the food um, on on some perspective. Um, I would I would start using percentages as well, you know. Um, because uh, th that's a great question. And business, I mean, it, it is so fun to work on the tax industry because <laughs> you hear a lot of things. I mean, it is one, you hear every story that is amazing. So, um, so I would keep very good track of all the activities and uh, maybe you have to go into a trip and you have to um, film in a particular place a scenario uh -huh. um, you got the options of travel expenses but uh, documentation is very gonna be uh, uh, it's gonna so, be so 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 some of, some of those expenses it might be deductible yes, yes, that definitely. Like, oh, yes. Okay. I, I would say just uh, you know it would be uh, indirect expenses which okay. might be a percentage. It's like me as a business owner, I cannot deduct every single meal I eat. So mm -hmm. maybe if I'm in a, in a business trip, maybe if I'm conducting business with a client, things like that, definitely. Okay. So must keep good records and do estimated taxes to avoid penalties. Um, estimated taxes has become uh, very important because we are making more money throughout the year. Don't forget to pay your estimated taxes, which are due every single quarter. <clears throat> All the business assets and liabilities and income are treated as belonging directly to the business owner. In summary, you are one and the same. There's no um, liability protection on, on, on that aspect. Okay, but things to remember, FICA, 15.3% applicable to your net income and then the federal income taxes, which is gonna be affecting your personal income after deductions. Partnership. The partnerships are very similar to a sole proprietorship, but there's more people involved, okay? So it's when two or more individuals join and carry a trade of business. Hey, Reina, let's go and open up, um, I don't know, coffee shop. Okay, we do not open an entity. We just go and 
put some tables, start making some coffee, and there it is. We have a partnership, okay? So both owners are legally the same. If I get in trouble through, through the business, Reina is gonna get affected as well. The partnerships will file its own tax return. It will file a separate tax return with its own EIN number. The form is 1065. And at the end of the year, we're gonna split the income, the income only, okay, the net income, sorry, the net income, income after expenses between me and Reina. Um, uh, she's gonna be 60% owner, I'm gonna be 40. Um, so she's gonna get 60% of the net income and I'm gonna get 40% of the net income. That is gonna flow to our personal tax returns. So if we make $100,000 of net income, because we have great coffee, 60% is 60,000 is gonna show up on um, Reina's tax return and she's going to be paying 15.3% for FICA and then the federal taxes as well. I'm going to be taking the other 40,000 on my personal taxes, which will okay. be subject so, to FICA as well. So that means that each owner will pay their own FICA, their own tax. Yes, yes. Separate, like yes. for the portion that the profit. Juan, I, I have another question. Um, uh, I have a book publishing in July. Should I start a business as a sole proprietor or LLC? I have minimal expenses and will be get checks twice a year. Let's see. I have a book publishing in July. Should I start a business? Mm -hmm. um, I would say open an LLC and um, we're gonna build on that. When we talk about protections and I heard about this from a lawyer. Um, so sometimes the people think about protecting the LLC from protecting the business mm -hmm. or basically what I'm trying to say is um, once you create an LLC it has protection both ways. So you are protecting your LLC from yourself and mm -hmm. also you are protecting yourself from the LLC. So sometimes the business of book editing, it is not risky, but you might have other activities um, outside that LLC that are risky. Maybe you write a book but also drive a truck, okay? Because you're writing a book about being on the road, okay? okay? So maybe your trucking business is very risky and you should isolate it from your, from your book activity. So okay. back to the partnerships. Um, partners do not receive W-2s. So Reina, do not ask me to give you a W-2 from our partnership because we are not supposed to get one, okay? You can take money out of our coffee shop throughout the year as an owner distribution, but you're gonna get a K-1 at the end of the year for your $60,000. And that probably will include the owner distributions that you took, okay? So at the end of the year, hey, you already took I don't know, 20,000. Mm -hmm. So even though you're getting a K-1 for 60,000, you're gonna say, Juan, but uh, hey, you only gave me 40,000. How come you're giving me K-1 for 60? Hey, Reina, you already took the 20 throughout the year. So oh, I see. It's, it, it holds add up, you know, in accounting, that's the perfect world because everything adds up, nothing gets uh, nothing disappears. If it disappears, it becomes a problem. So uh, good record keeping is necessary to estimate your taxes. And uh, if you rain a start taking money out of the business throughout the year, don't forget 
you have to pay FICA taxes and federal taxes. So you should be making your estimated taxes. Okay. Um, Juan, I have a question. Can you still contribute to a retirement account if your earnings are from a K-1 rather than a W-2 payroll or 1099? I mean, that's a good question. We have good questions today. Yes. Um, for to to contribute uh to to your retirement account it has to be earned income so i would say yes okay. i would say you know yes um and um double check with your financial planner that's a disclaimer <laughs> thank you juan <laughs> business uh c corporation c corporation is created by Nevada, okay? Every state will create its own entity, okay? So IRS has nothing to do with creating the entity. It always happens with the state and you can go to the silver flume and create your own entity right there. We have another class for that. Um, once you create a C corporation, Basically, you say, hey, I have a C corporation. You're going to get taxed as a C corporation. So there are, um, there are annual renewal fees. Corporations have a lot of requirements, such as shareholders meetings, meetings for directors, adopting and maintaining bylaws. So they are very fun to keep up because they're, you're going to be meeting a lot, <laughs> maybe with you. <laughs> by yourself or with the other owners. It is a complete separate entity from the owners. So you have that protection. It's get, it gets its own EIN number from IRS and, fire, and files its own 1120, okay? And therefore it pays its own taxes. What is the tax rate? 21%. On what? Always, that's the key question, 21% on what? It's gonna be based on the net income of the corporation. Dividends are distributed and taxed again on the individual level. We probably heard about this, the double taxation problem with corporations, but do not scratch the C corporation. Sometimes it is, uh, for particular situations, it is, it is a great tool. There is flexibility to spread the business earnings between corporation and shareholders. Some individuals are already at a higher tax bracket than 21%. They don't need the money in their pockets. So they might keep it at 21% in the corporations, okay? Also, corporations can provide benefits, fringe benefits for owners. Um, you have control of the salaries for the shareholders, for the employees and things like that. So it is a good vehicle, but you have to know how to drive it. S corporations. This is probably one of the most uh, famous or most uh, talk about S corporations. Um, yes, they are very useful in some situations. In some situations they are not. It is also created at the Nevada Secretary of State, which means you go to the Secretary of State, you create a corporation, and then you tell the IRS that you wanna get taxed as an escort. We're gonna build on that a little bit. You file the 2553 form to request to IRS that you wanna get be taxed as an S-corporation. You must follow Nevada requirements, same as a corporation. And also um, you have to make sure that you file its own tax return with its own EIN number 1120S form. And you are gonna get a K-1 as well for the shareholders. It is a pass-through, okay? This is the key thing about the s -corp what everybody likes, okay? It is a pass-through where the income that flows from the corporation 
it is not subject to FICA, but it is subject to personal income tax. But there's a requirement that every shareholder should receive an S a wages from the S corporation. And the wages have to be reasonable within your industry standards. There's some flexibility, but bookkeeping is imperative and good planning. Let me explain this with some drawings, okay? So we know that shareholders, shareholders pay personal income taxes on the income from the business and they should receive a reasonable salary. This is how it flows. You got your escort. You got some income and you got some expenses. If you have an S Corp and you are a shareholder, you have to give yourself, pay yourself a reasonable W-2, okay? If you are the manager, you cannot pay only yourself $10,000 a year, okay? That's a very bad pay for a manager. You should quit that job, okay? So make it, reasonable standard and uh, you can definitely go and look up on the job search engines how much a manager in your industry should be getting but going back to the drawing you got income and expenses one of those expenses are going to be the w2 for the owner let's assume there are no other employees now just the owner that w2 what's going to happen is going to pay fica and federal taxes like any other w2 normal w2 they take out fica and federal taxes but after those expenses you're going to have some profit hopefully so that profit is going to flow to the k1s and the K1S is going to show your company made our coffee shop made 100,000. So 40%, which is mine, 40,000 is going to flow to my personal taxes. But that 40,000 is not going to pay FICA taxes. That's where the savings are. No FICA taxes only federal taxes, federal income taxes on my tax return as a shareholder, okay? So there's a lot of savings potential in here, but it has to be reasonable. Um, we, sometimes we said that, you know, pigs get fed, hawks get slaughtered, okay? So you cannot abuse the W-2 minimize the W-2 and try to make it all K-1 income because you might get caught and the, the IRS will convert this K-1 to a W-2 to catch up on self-employment and FICA taxes. Um, so this is kind of the selling points of an S-Corp, but it comes with requirements, especially the W-2 requirement that you have to be, it has to make sense. So what about the LLC? Uh, there were some questions about LLCs in here. Here is your bottom line. IRS does not have separate rules for LLCs. This might come to a surprise for many people, but LLCs are not, are not a tax structure, okay? Remember, we talk about who is getting the money. If your LLC is getting the money, it really doesn't matter. What matters is how is that LLC getting taxed, okay? 
And this is a very common um, misconception. If a client, a new client, or, or somebody else comes and says, um, I need to do my business taxes. Okay, so what kind of entity structure? How are you getting tax? I have an LLC. That's a, that's a red flag right there for me. So the business owner does, doesn't know how it's getting tax, okay? Because the LLC, it has to fit in one of these four examples that we gave. There are more, but we're gonna focus on this. So proprietorship, partnership, S corporation or corporation, okay? So for all of you that have LLCs, you have to define in which category you're getting tax because that's the starting point of tax planning. Um, sole proprietorships, what are sole proprietorships? You know, remember that we talk about how to define a sole proprietorship. It is basically um, one single member. So if you have an LLC that is only one owner or spouses here in Nevada, you can, you will be taxed as a sole proprietorship. If you have an LLC that have two or more, it's gonna get taxed as a partnership. So if uh, with Reina, we go and open an LLC, we don't do anything else, by default, we're gonna get taxed as a partnership. But the good thing is that there's a protection between our business activity and our personal um, matters. So yes, we're probably gonna get taxed the same way with or without an LLC, but we're gonna have more protection having that LLC in the middle. LLCs, if let's say that me and Raina decide, you know what, the partnership structure is not gonna work well, okay? So we're gonna send the form 2553 to the IRS and ask them, I don't wanna do the partnership structure anymore. I wanna change that to an S Corp because there are good things about S Corp as well. So we change that LLC to be taxed as an S Corp. And we can do the same by filing the 8832 as uh, to be taxed as a corporation. You can move from one tax structure to the other, but there are limitations on going back and forward and you know time limitations and things like that. Usually people, my, um, a business owner might start with a sole proprietorship. Then things start getting better. I'm gonna open an LLC, but do they don't change the way they get tax. They, they remain a sole proprietorship for tax purposes. Then they decide, you know what, it is time to get taxed as an S Corp because of my particular situation. But later in life, they decide they're gonna go public. So they decide, you know what, I'm gonna convert my S Corp to a C Corp. So the same LLC went through different stages of taxation. Okay, and, and that can happen in a long, through a long time, but yes, it can happen. Also, <clears throat> very important um, perspective about taxes. Once you figure out how your business is taxed, then you have to figure it out how you are getting paid as a business owner. We have a class that goes more into detail about this, but a sole proprietorship, basically, you're getting tax on the whole net income. So you can take that money out throughout the year. Partnerships, we get distributions, and at the end, we get a K-1. Corporations, 
there are no distributions for a corporation. You cannot just take money out of the corporation. So it's going to be through W-2s, dividends, or um, capital gains. S corporation, it's more flexible. You can get money out of it through a W-2 because you have to first, and also some distributions that you're going to take care of in the K-1 as well. But the class is about tax rates. So make sure that you keep that in mind. The FICA taxes, the federal taxes, and the um, corporate taxes, depending on your structure. Let's do a poll number two. Um, I might have a... So we got some quick questions. Can I start a new business as a sole proprietor with an LLC and later change to an S Corp? Yes, we already did that example. Yes, you can do that. How do you start an LLC in Nevada? Secretary of State, um, we, we have the silver flume. Um, send us an email. We can send you the links later on. It's, it's not very complicated to open up an LLC. Uh, but uh, definitely the Nevada SOS NV, you can open up your LLC right there. And we have a class about how to open your own LLC as well. We have a class about many things. So let's do the poll number two. Okay, let's see, poll number two, relaunch, edit, poll number two. So let's do this. Tell us what type of tax structure do you have in your business? And there's a, there's a trick in here. So let's see. There's a tricky question. Do you have a sole proprietorship? You know, there's some people with an S corps. For tax purposes, what is your tax structure? Um, they're not responding as fast. They might be looking for that trick answer here. Okay, what well, we'll build on that. Says, um, if we have an LLC in one state and are thinking of moving to another state, what do we need to do? Um, that's a question for the Secretary of State, but my experience tells me that um, um, oh, somebody gave out the trick. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so um, if you have an LLC in another state, you're going to have to register your LLC uh, in Nevada as a, you know, I think it's called as a, as a foreign entity. So you have to let the state know that somebody else, another entity is operating here in Nevada. Or you can just open a new LLC here in Nevada, but uh, that, that, um, that has to depend on many factors. So let's close I have the poll. I have another question. Um, uh, well, they, congratulations, great information, Juan. My business is healthcare and I bill for my services caring for patients. I'm about to pay 20,000 to 30,000 in legal fees for a design patent, different than my usual business operations. It doesn't yet make sense to create a separate corporation for my invention until it appears profitable and has other associated expenses. I was previously advised to simply expense it under my current corporation. What do you think will be the best way to structure and or expense? Um, you should consider um, talking to, a, to an asset protection um, lawyer. What are your expectations on this? Um, also, remember expenses are gonna deduct your net income. So, do you have income that you can use those expenses? Maybe you can spread the, um, those expenses throughout 
uh, maybe the, the, um, the patent on those expenses can be depreciated as, a, um, as an asset throughout for future years. So um, I cannot tell you a definite answer about that without um, you know knowing a little bit more, but on the protection side, maybe um, open up in an LLC in Nevada is only $450. You already spent 20 and 30,000. So maybe you wanna keep things separate. Uh, maybe it's gonna become like a legacy for your future generations. And you wanna, for that particular purpose, you don't want it to die with your business. Um, you know, some, um, there are some um, continuity um, issues there. I, I definitely suggest talking with an asset protection lawyer. And, and we have some um, lawyers that have um, taught in here as well. Sorry if Thank I cannot you. answer directly. Okay, uh, and, uh, let's do let's do the end polling and let's move ahead. Okay, so nobody fall for the trick. Uh, nobody answered that they have an LLC. That's good because LLCs are not a tax structure. Okay, so actually, uh, actually, Denise answered that. Yes, a tax structure. Uh huh. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> so. Uh, taxes that apply to my business, section three, independent contractors and employee taxes. So once you know what, what is your business entity, let's talk about if you have other people involved in the business. And this is an issue that has come uh, very important lately, uh, especially when people get, were getting PPP loans. Um, some businesses realized that they didn't have employees or they should have employees but they had only independent contractors or that they were independent contractors and they were not employees of their of their jobs you know it, it worked both ways so you cannot decide if you have an independent contractor or an employee it is not up to you sorry to tell you that but you have to follow the rules Okay, so you must meet certain conditions so uh, you can treat somebody as an independent contractor and not an employee, okay? So if you make somebody sign a contract, telling them you're gonna be my independent contractor. No, it really doesn't matter. It has to follow the the circumstances. So the person has been and will continue to be free from control and direction over the performance of the services. So they, you cannot tell them what to do and what not to do, what time to leave and things like that. They are an employee if you do that. They're not an independent contractor. The service they provide uh, it is outside your course of business. So the best, the service that they provide does not contribute to your overall business. It is different if you uh, hire somebody to be your salesperson or your, um, your office help, you know, um, than just somebody else to come and clean your your office or provide you with a banner for your um, for your office okay so there has to be that distinction between the service that is provided to you and the business the nature of your business the service is performed in the course of an independently established trade of business on profession this is very related to the second one basically saying that you both are not engaged in the same business. And that happens a lot with uh, sometimes with construction, landscaping and things like that. If you hire somebody to help you during the landscaping, they are doing the same job as you are. So you should be paying them as uh, an employee for that, for that kind of service. So please 
review this the situation between you and somebody else that you can't uh, you contract with okay so you properly define that person as an independent contractor or as an employee important dates independent contractor if you have established defined properly defined that you have an independent contractor before you make a check before you even you know talk about receiving money or transferring money to that person ask for a w9 and a copy of an id because you have to calculate at the end of the year the total payments that you paid to that independent contractor and you have to make a 1099 nec neck by january 31st if you pay that independent contractor more than six hundred dollars when you start asking for a w9 at the end of the year after paying a lot of money people avoid your phone calls okay and that's kind of the nature of the <laughs> of some independent contractors you know you don't they don't want to get that 1099 neck at the end of the year so once you establish the relationship ask for that w9 signature and id so you don't have to ask for their social security or ein number later down the road and you have to file the 1096 which is the sum it is the summary of all the 1099s so if you have you know five 1099s throughout the year the 1096 will have the total amount paid to all um, employ, uh, independent contractors. The 1096 goes to IRS, 1099 goes one copy to the independent contractor and another to the IRS. Keep compliance, avoid penalties. That's the uh, rule of the games, okay? Nobody wants to pay taxes, nobody wants to pay uh, penalties or interest. Employees different story for employees as soon as you have an employee ask for a w4 i9 copy of social security number and id there are more requirements for employees more paperwork for example if you pay somebody when you pay your employee you have to deposit the 15 of the following month of the payment the taxes that you took out from your employee. We have a class about um, payroll taxes, but basically the money that you took, you withhold, you, you, you don't take, you withheld money from, from their paycheck because the IRS told you to do so. So that money, you take it out, you put it in, in a separate bank account, so you make sure you don't touch it. And on the 15th of the following month, you send it to the IRS through EFTPS. 941s. This is a form, it's a quarterly form that you send to IRS. Basically saying this quarter, I pay so much in employee expenses. I have already sent you all the taxes that I took from them and we are good for this quarter. That's kind of the overall purpose of that 941 that goes to the IRS. Unemployment in Nevada, it's also filed quarterly under certain circumstances. So you have to comply with unemployment in Nevada because they will come to your office and they will ask you for workers' compensation as well. Um, especially now, after a lot of unemployment that was paid off, they are really working on their compliance. If you have employees at the end of the year, you have to send W-2s and W-3s. W-2s, one copy goes to the IRS, one copy goes to the employee. W-3, only goes to the IRS. It is basically the summary of all W-2s. It is kind of the causing of the 
1096 <laughs> from independent contractors. And at the end of the year, we file a 940, which is another summary of all the 941s as well. So on IRS side, there's always periodic forms. And at the end of the year, there's a summary form for everything. What happens if you don't have employees on one quarter? You still file the 941 with zeros. Um, what happens if um, a W-2 employee, you work only for a month and you don't know where he or she is, you keep that W-2, sorry, you send that W-2 to the address that you have on the W-4 and that's your part, okay? So even though that the employee disappear on you, you don't know where it is, hopefully it doesn't come back, um, you still have to file that W-2 even though you paid one week, one paycheck, and you send it to the W-4. That's why it's very important to have that W-4 handy once they, one before you write the first check. Nevada taxes related to employees. This is the modified business tax. Um, let's back up a little bit. Workers' compensation, it is required once you have one employee. I suggest you contact your workers' comp agent before you hire an employee. So you know that you have everything in place. You know how much it's going to cost you. And because Nevada monitors closely about workers' compensation. They have an open communication channel between workers' comp insurance and uh, Nevada. Okay. Modified business tax. It is based on quarterly payroll. It is only applicable for salaries above 50000 So for many small businesses, it is not um, taxable, but you still have to file. And this goes back to our principle. You have to know the taxable amount and you have to know about the tax rate, okay? The basic formula always comes handy. In this particular case, the taxable amount is gonna be only about 50,000. So if there's no taxable amount, there's no taxes. Uh, therefore, it's gonna, you have to file the form with just zeros. This is the unemployment insurance. It is an insurance, but we have included this on the tax forms as well. It's a taxable amount based on your total salaries up to 33,400. I think that amount just changed. Um, but the new the employers start at a rate of 2.95%. Again, let's go back to our formula. This is applicable for salaries up to 33,400. What is the tax rate? 2.95. So when you hire an employee, you have to make sure you keep this in mind. That employee, the money that you paid, is has going to has an will have an extra cost related to the unemployment insurance. What's that extra cost? 2.95%. SEP is based on the same taxable amount. Uh, this is continuing education program tax. I think it is. So this is for new employers that uh, and the tax rate is 0.05%. It is very small, but will add up. Okay, so also consider this as another expense on having an employee. Other Nevada, okay, let's see, we have more questions. 
we're running out of time, I'm sorry. But just a few slides. I find it easier to use a payroll company and let them track all of this. They stayed on top of changes better than, than, than me as well. Yes, uh, you can definitely, um, you can definitely delegate the payroll taxes to a payroll company. That's what you pay them for. But just make sure that you plan tax planning, that you plan for those expenses now that you know about the rates. You know, because the, the payroll companies are going to just take the money out of your bank account. Okay, this is for taxes. This is for an insurance. This is for Nevada. This is for us. But as a business owner, you know how much that employee is going to cost you and you can plan ahead for those expenses. Uh, do you pay that employment insurance SEP tax for workers come as a 1099 contractor? No. Uh, if you have a contractor, you don't have to pay unemployment insurance. If you are a 1099, if you are an, if you are an independent contractor, which by default you are a sole proprietor, um, or a company, actually, no, you don't have to pay for yourself the unemployment insurance and the workers comp. Okay. If you're, if you have, uh, if but. If you are an independent contractor that operates under an S Corp, yes, because in that particular case, you have to draw a salary from your S Corp, which a salary is going to make you pay or subject to workers' comp and unemployment insurance. So it depends, depending on your tax structure. Everything goes back to that particular point. From that particular point, you start building on the different taxes that apply to your business, okay? I, um, if you want me to repeat that, let me know. Section four, taxes that apply to my business, other Nevada taxes and some questions and answers. Nevada sales tax and use tax. These Nevada taxes apply in certain situations. Sales tax report is a taxable amount based on sales, not services. So this is if you are selling something. If your sales are under 10,000, you have to do this report quarterly, okay? If it's more, you probably have to do it monthly. Clark County, 8.375. The last time I checked, <laughs> I hope it didn't go up, but 8.375%. Uh, it is going up and up. It is paid by the customer, collected by the business and forward to Nevada. So this is a tax that needs a lot of planning because you collect that money um, from 10 bucks, it's $8.37. It is not small. So those $8.37, you have to keep them aside because they don't belong to you. They belong to Nevada. So price your products properly make sure you collect that sales tax you put it aside and you send it to nevada monthly or quarterly basis depending on your sales this comes back to the equation what is the taxable amount what is my tax rate and what do i need to do with those taxes the use tax report basically is the counterpart of the sales tax. This happens when we buy stuff, for example, in internet and we pay and we don't pay sales taxes. So basically all Nevada, all, all states 
they want their share. So if you didn't pay the sales tax somewhere else and you using the product here in Nevada, pay up here in Nevada, the taxable amount is based on the personal property value purchased outside Nevada that is used for personal and business purpose. Okay, this is kind of the counterpart, but um, it's very frustrating sometimes you start getting these forms from the from the sales and use tax department and you don't know what they are and uh, don't avoid them because they're going to keep sending those notices. So just make sure that you follow your rule. Do I have a taxable amount? What are the rules behind this taxable amount? And that's on what type of tax rate applies. Okay. Um, I have an extra federal withholding from a pension that can be drawn upon under an EIN for business or only my personal tax under SSSA. Um, anything that is withhold for federal purposes, it goes back to your personal taxes, nothing related to your business. So that withholding, you're gonna get it back if you don't have any tax liability on your personal side. But remember, if you have a sole proprietorship that has an income and FICA taxes apply and comes and shows in your personal taxes as I have, you have $1,000 in FICA taxes due and then you have another $100 in federal income taxes due. Your total tax liability is 1100, but you have the withholdings from your patient of uh, 2000. So at the end, you are getting back only the difference, the 900. So that's when planning takes precedence because um, your business income since you have to pay FICA taxes on federal income taxes, it can use up your other withholdings from your pension and your social security and things like that, okay? So at the end, everything will follow down to how much taxes do you owe, how much you have already paid, what's the net amount. Do you still have to fill out the Nevada sales tax form for your service only business with zeros? Um, two questions, two, I mean, you, you probably did not need to have, um, you didn't need to register with the sales tax probably. Um, but some businesses, when you open up the LLC, uh, you you might um, you might be subject to the use tax, since it is in the same form. But you have to comply with the use tax form. Yes, just fill it up with zeros. Don't ignore it because they're gonna keep coming back, and and put it with zeros. Send them back. Um, the sales, the Department of uh, Taxation has a very good website for the sales tax form. It is very, very convenient. If you register online, you can fill that form in like three minutes, especially if there are zeros. Just log in, choose the period, choose the form, the county, put a zero, submit, you're done, okay? So there's a lot of online tools right now. That can be another class um, that we can definitely use to simplify our lives. Action plan, what is gonna happen now? Taxes are based on rules and formulas, therefore are predictable. I'm pretty sure you have time to review your Facebook page 
uh, your advertisement and things like that. So now it's time to schedule some time to understand and organize your taxes. We all, we talk about for the last hour and a half, basically, about tax rates, about taxable amounts, rules, things like that. What are you gonna do with all this information? You're gonna receive a copy of the slides. You're gonna receive a copy of the presentation. So you need to schedule some time to understand and organize your taxes. Mark it on your calendar. You know, mark important tax dates on your calendar. Avoid penalties. This class can be a savings opportunity for you if you use it to avoid taxes and penalties. Okay. Mark on your calendar the same way you have marked to make an oil change on your car or any important reminders for your business. Put it in your calendar. If it's not in your calendar, it's not going to happen. Okay. Trust me, <laughs> I've been doing this for a while. So make sure you put it on your calendar uh, so everything can happen. You can delegate, but do not lose control. If you lose control, it's going to sneak on you. It's going to get a surprise. Um, now, with this information, we have empowered you so you can ask the right questions and you can keep the proper control. If you delegate, now you know what to ask. You know, how is my net income going? Should I prepare for to make an estimated taxes? Um, how come my, my sales tax is so high this particular month? Uh, do, I, do I have the money aside to pay for my payroll taxes, my unemployment insurance, my FICA taxes? I have a sole proprietorship, okay? So I have to, if I'm making money, you have to pay FICA taxes. So you better keep up good track of your prices and put that money aside. I always say that um, if you're paying taxes, you're doing something right. You're selling, you're making money. Just make sure you put some money aside so the taxes don't kill your business. And you have the information to avoid that situation. Okay, so definitely put it in your calendar on uh, we have the right not to pay more than we should in taxes, but we need to get organized. Okay, if you are paying taxes, it's because you're doing, if you're making money, but just make sure you pay only the amount that you should. Awesome. Thank you, Juan. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. Uh, have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.